Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Okay, let's talk about dating men in prison. Okay, dating men who are in prison. All right, now before we uh, dive in, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all of the new viewers. Welcome to all of the new subscribers. And welcome to you that have been here since the beginning. I appreciate you so very, very much. And I appreciate your comments. Just keep them coming. I read them every evening. And um, it lets me know how you feel about these messages. And I want to send out a special thank you to those that leave a donation. I really appreciate it so much. So now, let's dig into this message. Today's video was actually inspired by a letter that I received uh, from this young lady that asked, can you talk about reasons why women shouldn't date men in prison? Okay, so now to start off, I pulled a, an excerpt for us to watch together, and then we are, we'll talk about it, okay? Now, um, for those of you who have sensibilities to uh, foul language, remember this guy is uh, from prison, and his language is a little rough. So, just be patient. It's just a little short one, but I want you to get the flavor of men in prison. Okay, here we go. Why in the hell you dating a man in jail? He can't give you shit, he can't touch you, he can't give you a nut. Phone sex don't count. Fantasizing don't count. If that man ain't there to touch you or beat up beside you, you ain't got no man. You take care of somebody else's man. And you just the number one dummy. He around all them men and you telling me he ain't bust a nut, he ain't watching no booty, he ain't doing nothing. This man balls gonna swell up waiting on you. I don't care what you say, that man busting a nut inside one of them men every night. He got that one man that he give noodles to just to bust that ass wide open. But you saying you got a man, where he at? When you go out on a date, you by yourself. You at home by yourself, watching TV by yourself. You ain't got nobody there. <laughs> I'm just saying, you date somebody that ain't never coming home. You gonna be an old ass woman when he get there. And just like, you know, just like the fella said in the, uh, in the video, there's a lot of homosexual activity going on in prison. See, uh, men, uh, they have a really high sex drive. And there's no way in the world that they can be in prison for years and years and years and years and not have sex. Uh, these men are having sex with the guards, with the counselors, with any woman that, that comes around there on a regular basis. You understand? And outside women because they're privy to the a computer. So they can have outside women sending them money and whatever they need, things like that. Not just you. Men in prison many of them are using women on the outside for what they need for what they need and you know the women you know they just feel like this guy just loves me to death and he can't go nowhere you know nobody he by himself and they just see a guy in a cell somewhere being miserable <laughs> these guys are getting what they need in prison now Prison life can be very violent, too. Very violent, too. And they may, you know, they, they need to tough, they have to toughen up when they're in prison. You see? Unless they're going to play the role of the woman. It's a lot of things that go on in prison that you don't need to be a part of. And even if they come out, they're still in that prison life mindset. You understand? Still 
prison life mindset. You don't want to be a part of that. You don't want to be a part of that. And, and, they, they can bring you diseases. They can bring you diseases. Men from prison. Ladies, it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous on a lot of levels. You see, these men, they could be violent. You understand? They could give you diseases. Other than the fact that they're just using you for your resources while they are in prison. And you feel like you just going to hold them down. And when they come out, they're going to be with you and love you for all that you have done for them. Most times it never happens. When these men get out, they forget all about you. You understand? Because you're not the only one. They got other women they've been talking to in prison. And plus, they're free now. Free is different. Do not waste your time dating men from prison. It is a horrible idea. And I hope that I was clear on that because this can be a serious matter. You understand? Don't 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 do it, ladies. Don't don't do it. I wouldn't even continue to date a man that went to prison. If he was if he was uh you know sentenced to uh, years anything past a year, I'm done. Anything past a year, that's it for me. <laughs> I'm not going that stint. You understand? And even a year, I may I may flake off after a few months. You understand? Mm-mm. That's no life for you. And if you have kids, it's no life for your kids either. You understand? You you gotta go up to the prison to visit him. And if you got kids, hear your little baby seeing him behind. Uh-uh. That is no life for you at all at all ladies let it go do not date men in prison period period now you know when they get out when they get, when they get out they got a long hard road before they can even you know function back into society you don't want to be a part of that either. You don't want to be a part of that. It's too many men out here. You understand? Who are out here working, establishing themselves, and are looking for women. Looking for women. There's no reason for you to be hooked up with a man in a cage. Why? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense at all. You know, you can empathize. I'm sorry he went, but hey, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. So my advice is do not date men from prison. Do not date men in prison. Do not date men on their way to prison. You understand? Stay clear of that. You don't even want to be a part of it. Um, I've never dated a man uh, who was in prison. And uh, I wouldn't. <laughs> and I wouldn't advise you to either. From my understanding, it's a very tough, long, dreary road. Um, men are wanting you to write them letters and send them money. And all of that. And I was looking uh, at some information where women are sending like lots of money to these men in prison. Just to hold them down like $200 a pop and things like that. Ladies. Now, I understand that, you know, if, if folks in your family have been in and out of prison. You probably are more likely to date somebody in prison because you've had family members in prison, okay? So you probably empathize with that. 
But, but men in prison are dating lots of women. Lots of women. You see? But here you are outside supporting him. And that's what I'm telling you. I think that is not the thing to do. Women should not support men. Period. You understand? Now, if it's your if it's your um your brother, your father, you know, your child, of course you want to support them. But you don't want to support a man that you call yourself dating that's sitting in prison. Why are you doing that? Men in prison will promise you anything. You know, when they come out, you know, you are going to live a very happy life together and all of that and all of that. But remember, when uh, men are in prison for a number of years, it's a psychological thing that happens. Because they, they become accustomed to the prison life. You understand? And if they are in prison for a long period of time, they are very accustomed to somebody telling them when to get up, when to go to bed, when to eat, when to do this, when to do... You understand? I don't think you want that. And, and plus... When men come out of prison, it's a totally different story than when they were in prison. For instance, think about it. Think about it. If a person is locked up in a cage and you're on the outside, right? They're going to promise you anything to get what they need from you to make their life comfortable on the inside. But that doesn't mean that they are honest with you. That doesn't mean that they care for you. That doesn't mean that when they get out, they're going to do all those things that they promised when they were in prison. Because when they are let out of prison, it's a different ball game. They're free to meet other women and, you know, pursue whatever they want to pursue that may or may not include you. And from my understanding... Many times it doesn't. Women are just being used. Just like the fellow said in the, uh, in the video. Women are being used when you're dating men in prison. You see, they have access to, you know, to the computer and all of that. And if you're sending them money, they can call. And you're sending them money, they may not just be calling you. They could be calling other women on your dime. You can't control what they are doing. You can't control a man, period, whether he's inside or outside. But why would you want a man in prison? You know, I've heard some women say, you know, well, at least you know where he is. That kind of sounds like desperation to me. If you feel like you need to know where your man is so you will accept him in prison. Women, you're not getting anything out of that. There's no benefit for you when you date a man in prison. And that's the thing. Know your worth. You're worth a whole lot more than that. You understand? It's a waste of time for you to date these men. It's nothing in it for you. And even if they come out and be with you, a lot of times they are violent. You understand? They're despondent. You see? Because they're used to the prison life. They're, they're totally acclimated to the prison life. You see? And coming out, it takes a while before they can Get their footing again. You know, they're felons. Getting a job is going to be an issue. You see? But women, don't date men in prison. I think it's a waste of your time. Time, money, energy. You see? When there are plenty of men out here, it's the same men. 
it, it's the same men out here that are in prison, the same attitude. So don't think that they're, you know, because they're locked up and they tell you all these sweet things and everything. You see, you want to believe it. You want to believe it. No. No, you can't believe it. A lot of men in prison, they're there because they're con men. You understand? You do not want to be involved with a man in prison. And, and I hope you understand this message. I hope that it helps someone. Okay, now we got some letters, so let's let's go to some, and we're going to try not to make it, it too long. Okay, hold up. For those of you who are new to the channel, I will answer your questions. Okay, so at the end of the video, I'll show you a link where you can send your questions, and I will either answer them on the air or... I will answer them through the email. Now, those of you, if you send me a letter and you want me to answer it through email, you don't want me to read it online, put it right up at the top of the letter. Don't put it at the bottom. Put it right at the top of the letter. Please send email response, okay? And, and I will comply. It'll just save me some time if you put it right up top. And, <laughs> you know... <laughs> The letters are coming in now, and some of them are quite lengthy. Let's try to keep the letters to one page if we can. You know, just give me a brief summary and ask me the question. Okay, and that just keeps things moving. So, all right, here we go. Here we go with the first question of today. <laughs> all right, I am 51 years old. I am in a long-distance relationship with a man from Nigeria. He is 60 years old and we've been communicating for almost three years. When we first met, he called me on Messenger. I remember all so well because I brushed him off when he called. I was so busy and focused on my career at that time. I didn't have time for Facebook or any online apps dealing with all sorts of people. And yeah, that's a good thing. I told this man that I was not interested in talking with him. I was upset because it was while I was driving. I told him he shouldn't call because I didn't give him permission to call me. I wouldn't give him a chance to talk. He spoke to me, Lady, you are free. I am sorry. I hung up with him. I got to work and was terminated from work. The same day. Wow. This was not a good day for you. I called him back and apologized because I was very rude to him. I told him that I felt bad the way I spoke to him. I have decided we could develop a friendship with two things in mind. He has to be honest, telling me the truth, and he could not ask me for any money. Because I don't give men money. He agreed and it's been good since. The only problem is I have fallen in love with this man. And the distance is great. 5,000 miles away. Yeah. It is. <laughs> okay. And we're going to come back to you have fallen in love with him. Okay. I love how he talks and cares for his children. He is a good provider in spite of the financial challenges in Africa. He has also been with me in spite of my health challenges and diabetes and having surgery. Well, I guess you say he's been with you, but um, it doesn't look like he came to the U.S. I guess he's been with you over the phone is what you meant. Okay. He is loving and caring. But I can't tell what his true intentions are toward me. He said he loves me naturally. But I struggle with knowing what this really means. To love someone naturally from a man's perspective. You got me on that one. I, I don't know what he means. But I've never heard the term. And uh, maybe some of the, the men on the site 
can respond in the comments and let us both know what that means. Loving someone naturally. Okay. I hope to visit Nigeria in September. It is a birthday gift to myself. I hope to see him. But if not, I have other friends in Nigeria. I want to visit Nigeria and to some of the other countries that line up with my ancestry. I am 39% Nigerian and I want to visit the continent of Africa. I've been waiting on this man for going on three years now and I do believe he is my future husband. After many months of communicating, getting close and planning a future together. He is waiting on a civil court case to settle before coming to the U.S. Should I continue to turn down many marriage proposals from people who are closer in distance? To be exact, I have turned down because I don't love them. Okay, the first thing that I see is that you have not met the man in person. You you didn't state it in the letter that you you met him in person, so it looks like everything has been long distance. You have been communicating with him for three years, long distance. All right. You cannot know a person over the phone or over the internet or however you have been communicating with this man. You, you don't really know this man. And what you feel is not love. It's infatuation. You, 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 have, <laughs> you have not even been in the man's presence. It's not love. You are smitten with infatuation from talking to him and what he's telling you and all of that. Now, you say that he... He takes care of his kids. How do you know that? Have you witnessed that? Your friends in Nigeria, do they know this man? Have they have they confirmed to you what this man has been telling you? If they haven't, and all your information is from him, I would not trust it. I would not trust it. You understand? Three years. He's had a civil court case for three years. I think something's up with him. I, I really do. I, and I wouldn't trust it. I wouldn't trust it at all. In three years, if this man was serious about you, he would have made his way to you. You understand? He would have made his way to you. Long distance relationships really don't work. Because you can't really get to know these people. You need somebody close. You need somebody close that you can get some references on these people. You understand? It's tough enough to know people who live in the neighborhood. If you're dating somebody, in the, it's tough enough to know them that close. So you certainly cannot know this man 5,000 miles away. You don't know him. I don't care how long you've been communicating with him over the phone. You only know what he has been telling you. And you can't go on that. You, you go to Nigeria. You go to see your people. Your friends. And don't worry about this man. Don't go to Nigeria Looking to meet this man. I think it's a bad idea. Understand? This man could be married over there. With his kids. You understand? You can't always trust things like this. And you probably knocked him off at the knees when you told him, don't ask you for money. Because that's probably where he was going with that. You see? But he's still communicating with you because... You know, he could still ask you for money. After a while, especially you say you done fallen in love with him. And that's what they want. You to fall in love with them. And then, now he's already having a court case. 
he might he might just tell you his hard times and you know how if he had this money he's not going to ask you but he'll just put it out there for the hard time he's having and then because you love him you may say well you know what let me just help you with this don't do it don't do it don't do it i think it's a dead end my advice is for you to date people closer to you. Closer to you. And if you have marriage proposals, don't just marry somebody because they proposed to you. I agree with you. If you didn't love them, don't marry them. But, see, love and infatuation are two different things. To love somebody you really got to spend time with the person. Love is something that grows over time. You don't just see somebody, you talk to somebody, and all of a sudden you love them. You are infatuated by them. You understand? You're excited when you hear their voice. Maybe you get butterflies or whatever like that. That's infatuation. That's not love. That's not love. And you cannot build a relationship on pure effectuation. And that's what you have with this man. You don't know this man. My advice, let it go. Let it go. And talk to people who are closer to you. There are plenty of men right here in the U.S. that are looking for nice Pleasant, beautiful women. You don't need that just because she is 39% Nigerian. That doesn't mean anything. We all something. <laughs> we all mix with a whole lot of something. You understand? Listen. Date people that are close. That's my that's my message to you. And uh this this man, I wouldn't trust anything he says. I really wouldn't. And uh, I would let it go. Uh, so I hope that my advice helps you on that one. All right. Let's 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 see if we have another letter here. As an older woman, I met two guys both dislike black women and married white women who did for her and her family but wouldn't do for his own family or anybody black. One didn't have children, but wasted decades chasing white women while doing far little to improve his life. The other had two families, one black and the other biracial. He cheated on both women, and now his children from both families won't have anything to do with him. I found out recently that one allowed his mother to die with no support, yet he helped his white in-laws at a drop of a dime while putting all black women down. What are your thoughts on going behind black men who married white women while putting black women down for decades? Well, it you know, it's a personal thing. It, it's a personal thing. That, that's my thoughts. And and I wouldn't I wouldn't waste time on it. And I'm sure there are men out there who don't like black black men out there who don't like black women. You understand? They're they're out there, and um, maybe you need to look at my video. Um, why black women are the least married? You know, maybe that will uh, kind of add on to what I'm gonna say here. But um, yeah, you know, it's a personal thing. It's just like. I've met white men who don't like white women. It's a preference. It's a preference. Now, why black men go out and and they feel like they need to justify to white women why they why they prefer them, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know why they feel like they need to justify themselves, but they those that do, do for some reason. Another, 
And uh, for this person, this young man who let his mother die and, you know, he's taking care of his white in-laws, you don't know what's really behind that. You, you can't just assume that he, you know, that he didn't take care of his mother because he's black. If he did not take care of his mother, is something deeper going on with him. You understand? It's not just a black white thing. Now, the other guy, I have no idea. I have no idea why, you know, black men would go out and down their own women. But just like I said, I dated a white man that did the same thing about his women. So, so it, it's a personal thing. Don't lump all into one pot. You understand? You just happen to meet two that don't like don't like black women. You see? So you know what? I would I wouldn't sweat over that. I wouldn't sweat over that at all. You see, it's plenty of men from other races that don't like the women from their race. You understand? It's a personal preference. So you know, I I I wouldn't lose any I wouldn't lose any sleep over that. You understand? So I hope that you uh, understand that message because you know, people. You know, people have their reasons why they don't like this and why they don't like that. Maybe something happened to them. You know, maybe. Uh, the the men have a bad experience with a black woman or whatever, but whatever the situation is, you know, don't try to read something into it. Okay, yeah, black men do have a lot of issues, a lot of issues from from society, just trying to make it, whatever. They do have issues. But there are many black men who have grown out of issues. They have matured. You understand? And they don't have these issues. So, so I, you know, I, I wouldn't read much into it. I, you know, and don't lump and think that all black men feel this way. You know, but it's a preference. And that's all it is. So, um. Let's see if we can read another letter. Hold on. Okay, we got one last letter here. I've been in a relationship with my partner for eight years. When I met him, he was married, but separated for over 10 years. Okay, he treats me good. He pays and buys gifts and takes me on holidays. He's good like that and says that's the way he shows love. Yeah. That's his love language, to give gifts. That's a wonderful thing. Although he has never said he loves me. That, 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 <laughs> let me tell you. If a man is spending money on you, he cares for you. You see, he cares for you. And that's what you want. You, you know, why does a man have to say he loves you? If he is caring for you and providing for you, that should be sufficient. Efficient. Okay. Um, and I assumed you've already you're already having sex with him or he would not be doing these things. You understand? Alright, so let's say. I used to live with him, but he became controlling and hurtful. So I moved out and got my own flat. But he's still controlling. And I can't go any further in this relationship. Because he's married. Now you worried about him being married when he he been married, but you live with him. You understand? Now you're looking for excuses because he's married and I can't live with him because of the way he is sometimes. Controlling and hurtful. I found lately I do love him, but not in love with him anymore. I feel guilty to finish our relationship because he's done so much for me. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So you, you've you been in a, rela a relationship with this man for eight years. Uh, and he's been separated from his wife.
for 10 years. Okay. Now you say in the letter that you did move in. He's been treating you good. He's taking you on holidays. He's spending money. He's buying you gifts. Okay, so now in his mind, you're his woman. You're his woman. Okay. Now, men, many men feel like it's their responsibility to control women. Okay. And now he's putting his money in you. Yeah, he's going to have something to say about you. What you do, where you go, maybe what you wear, you know, whatever. He, you know, he's got something to say about it. Now, since you don't like his controlling and sometimes he says things that are hurtful to you. Now you want to break the relationship. And you certainly can. In it, you can certainly break it off and just tell him, you know, that uh, our relationship has run its course. And uh, I don't want to be in it anymore. And let him go. You understand? But <clears throat> just realize, realize that you probably got a little tired of him. Probably got a little tired of him. And you say here that he was hurtful. He probably said some hurtful things to you when you uh, didn't comply with his wishes. You see? He, he wants to control you, but when you don't comply, now he's hurtful to you because he's poured his money, his time, his energy into you. In the letter, you say that, uh, you know, his love language is, you know, doing all these things for you. But he has never said he loved you. Why is that important? That he verbally says he loves you when he's showing you that he cares for you. Even with his controlling and hurtful ways. He cares for you. But now you don't care for him anymore. So, my advice to you <clears throat> is to tell him that the relationship is over. You no longer want to be in the relationship anymore. Now, he'll probably want to know why. Why? Why? And you can tell him. You can tell him why. It's over. You understand? But, if you do that, make sure that's what you want. Make sure that you want it to be over. You moved into your own flat, and you don't want to be with him anymore. The best thing to do is to break it off from him clean. Break it off with him clean. Just tell him that, you know, you don't want to be in a relationship anymore. It's over. You see? And that's it. That's it. Now he may try to put up a fight. You understand? Because he poured so much into you. But you've already moved out into your flat. And he may not put up a fight at all. He may, he may surprise you and just say, okay. You understand? So, um, what I'm saying is, since you've been with him for eight years, you both deserve some closure. So, my advice is, is that you have a meeting of the minds and just close this relationship out. Just say that it is over and you both can go your separate ways. That's my advice to you on this one. Okay? And and I hope I hope my advice can help you uh with the situation. All right? But just know that um love takes time. I know we we throw that word around uh, so loosely, but because you can't love a person today and then hate them the next day, that's not love. You see, love is a very strong bond that's harder to break because that bond has been worked on over a period of time. You understand? And it, you can't just break it just like that. You see? So that's why I say a lot of times that, you know, you care for them, you know, and all of that. 
but maybe it's not love yet. You understand? So I hope I hope that this message resonates with someone. Now, for those of you who have questions and you'd like me to answer your questions, here is the link. Send your questions to Miss Faye's World at hotmail.com. That's Miss Faye's World at hotmail.com. And uh, I will either answer your question on the air or I will send you an email response. Just remember, if you would like a email response, just put it up in the heading, right? You know, just put it right at the top so that I would know right away. Okay, it'll just save some time. Now, I'd like to uh, thank you all for supporting this channel. I wish you well. I wish you happiness and peace. And I hope to see you next time.